Over the course of the last 20 years, we've been trusted by our clients to solve their external engineering challenges. But in that same period, we've seen our clients face a number of internal engineering challenges too. The first challenge is delivery. Their lead times are just too long. And one of the main reasons is that engineering sits on the critical path, both pre and post contract award. The second challenge is profit. So let's take a look at each of these challenges in turn. First of all, delivery. So why does engineering sit on the critical path? Well, here are some observations. The engineering process itself may not be clearly defined in the first instance or strictly adhered to in practice. Various tools or databases may already be in use, but have they been checked for accuracy? Are they up to date? And are they controlled for use? There's little to no integration between the tools. So a change made in one is not automatically carried over to the next and manual errors start to appear. We see that engineering often gets done twice, once to win the work in the first place and then again to deliver the work after the order lands. We see that bottlenecks appear in the availability of suitably qualified and experienced personnel. Senior engineers are consumed with low value tasks that they should not be doing, and developing engineers are not provided with tools to enable them to flourish and do more meaningful work. We see that the core understanding of a product still resides in the heads of a few. Too much interpretation is left to engineering judgment, and there's a lack of traceability in terms of decision-making. And engineering hours always seem to overrun. Profits are wiped out and manufacturing needs to order long lead items at risk. Let's look at the second challenge, namely profit. Research shows that the main cause of profit erosion in a project engineering company is the cost of poor quality. So what is the cost of poor quality and how big is it? Well, the definition of cost of poor quality is any unexpected cost or cost variance to the as sole position on a project no matter at which stage in the project it occurs. And the scale of the cost of poor quality is immense. According to the latest research, the cost of poor quality can equate to anywhere between 10 to 30% of the total sales revenue. Now just take a minute to think what that cost would be in your own business. So where does the cost of poor quality originate from? Well, taking your purchase order as the point of reference, traditional thinking would have us believe that 100% of the cost of poor quality happens after the order lands. However, the latest thinking shows us that only 50% of the cost of poor quality happens after the order lands through engineering overruns, manufacturing defects, and unnecessary testing. That means that a staggering 50% of the cost of poor quality happens before the order lands through little to no engineering being done upfront, manual errors, and poor costing. Now, COVID-19 and the subsequent downturn in the oil and gas market are compounding these challenges and they are driving the need for change. The volume of work is decreasing and the average order sizes are falling, but you're still required to do the same amount of engineering before, during and after the order lands. Schedule is a key deciding factor as to whether you win the work or not, but it represents a significant commercial risk if you fail to hit the promised date. And your clients know the cost of everything and the value of nothing. Your margins are under significant pressure, one small error, and you're into painful negative territory. And on top of that, some EPC contractors and subsea production system suppliers are driving towards no engineering post-contract award. For example, Technib FMC Subsea 2.0, Baker Hughes Subsea Connect, and one subsea's blue box, and they would expect you to follow suit. So our clients are responding to this need for change in typically one of two ways. Some do nothing and hope for the best, rely on luck and just stick to the knitting. But as Henry Ford once said, if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got. Others see it as an opportunity to take a step back, to review what they do, to create a competitive advantage by reducing lead times and to increase their profit. And that forward thinking proactive approach is endorsed by a wonderful phrase in a recent McKinsey report that says, the time for visionary thinking and bold action is now. So to solve the challenges of long delivery times and no profit, we need to take engineering off the critical path and we need to drive the cost of poor quality towards zero. So how do we do that? Well, process optimization and automation is the answer. But what is process optimization and automation and what does it do? Well, in three words, it simplifies, integrates and automates your engineering workflow. It captures the expert knowledge that resides within your company and it creates a set of standard rules within a single source of truth. It eliminates manual errors and costly rework by adopting an accurate and consistent approach. 
enables you to search previous designs, components, materials, sub-assemblies, and manufacturing databases to create a bespoke solution from a standard library of parts. This is sometimes referred to as configure to order capability. And it increases the utilization of your more junior engineers, which then allows your senior engineers to perform more added value tasks. It completes 70 to 80% of the engineering prior to contract award. It provides cost certainty for you at the bid stage, and it makes for a more compelling bid. And it shortens your lead times by removing engineering from the critical path on post-contract award delivery. That will create a competitive advantage. It will get you to a key invoicing point quicker, and it will build an on-time delivery reputation with your client. So how do you apply process optimization and automation to a business? Well, that can be done in one or two ways. The first way is to optimize and automate a single step. Examples here would be front-end sizing, costing, and quote generation tools in what we would call the inquiry to order phase, or they could be back-end engineering tools in what we would call the order to invoice phase. The second way is to optimize and automate an entire process. Now, this is more akin to ERP systems, where you integrate the workflow between disciplines such as sales, projects, engineering, procurement, manufacturing, and testing. The best way is unique to you and the products that you supply, and that is determined during the initial consultations, the current state mapping exercise, and the future state discussions. So what are the ultimate benefits of process optimization and automation? Well, think ACE, accuracy, consistency, and efficiency, and they come together in a very simple sum. You can't just wake up one morning and say, I'm gonna be more efficient today than I was yesterday. You need to do something beforehand, and to make that efficiency happen, that doing piece is mandating accuracy and creating consistency in everything that you do. Efficiency means shorter lead times, lower costs, and higher profits. So process optimization lets you do more engineering in less time for a lower cost. So that brings us to Maxim. Maxim is our own process optimization and automation product. We've been using Maxim in our own business for the last 20 years to drive our own efficiency gains. And over the course of the last five years, we've put Maxim into a commercial software platform that we're now licensing to our clients across the globe. So what is Maxim and how does it work? Well, Maxim is a Python-based software platform that sits between the user at the top of this graphic who wants to do a set task and the various data sources at the bottom of the graphic that are needed to complete that task. Maxim simplifies, integrates, and automates the workflow to deliver 100% accurate and 100% consistent outputs in an order of magnitude less time. The set task can be pretty much anything, but Maxim really comes into its own when there is an engineering element and multiple data sources involved. The data sources can be pretty much anything too. The most common data sources are product databases, engineering calculations, and report templates of sorts. Now, most of these data sources will already exist within your business. So wherever possible, we'll be able to use what you've already got and negate the need to create any new data sources from scratch. But the best way to explain what Maxim does is to show a couple of examples. This first example is what we would call a front-end bid automation tool. In this case, the client wanted to create an accurate and a consistent way to size, cost, and quote two valve types across four global locations. Maxim was configured to define the workflow, perform the relevant calculations, select the preferred solution, cost the preferred solution, generate a representative GA drawing, and then automatically populate the quote. The various data sources were upgraded too to make them fully maintainable, and we created the ability to export the relevant information into a searchable database and their existing ERP system. The benefits were significant. 100% accuracy drove the cost of poor quality down to zero. Remember that front-end cost of poor quality could equate to anywhere between 5 to 15% of your turnover. That cost now appears as profit on the client's bottom line. There's 100% consistency across four global locations. That means that a valve that is sized and costed by four different sales engineers will prescribe the same result. There's 100% confidence in the cost of the valve at the bid stage. The client now knows that the valve is costed in an accurate and a consistent way using the most up-to-date reference data only. It's resulted in an order of magnitude reduction in the time to generate a quote. Sales engineers are now guided to offer a standard solution and they only need to refer to engineering when a truly bespoke solution is needed. This minimal intervention from engineering has resulted in a cost saving of around £250,000 in man hours alone, 
And finally, Maxim now provides a more detailed quote, which generates a more compelling bid, and that is starting to drive the client's quote to order conversion rate up. The second example is what we call a back-end engineering delivery tool, and here's a glimpse of its clean and intuitive graphical user interface. In this case, the client did both the concept design and the detail design after the contract award. The remit here was to significantly reduce lead time by eliminating manual errors and to fast track the ability to create an initial bill of materials in a set of manufacturing drawings so they could order long lead items within weeks of the contract award. Maxim was configured to assemble and complete all the necessary calculations, drawings and check sheets and interface with a vast array of existing databases, parts libraries and drawing templates. The benefits were 100% accuracy, which drove the back-end cost of poor quality down by a third. 100% consistency in the engineering workflow across three global locations. A 75% reduction in the engineering lead time. That equated to a 75% reduction in the engineering cost and a 75% increase in the engineering capacity with no increase in headcount. And by taking engineering off the critical path, the overall delivery time was reduced by a third. So that's what Maxim has done for others. To see if Maxim can do the same and more for you, just call or email us to set up a free and confidential discussion. Thank you.